Hello, I'm Billy Corr, and I know what you are probably thinking right now. Where has the Flying Scotsman gone? This is the Flying Scotsman channel, but instead you're seeing Billy Corr from the Nostalgia Mall. Has the Nostalgia Mall bought out the Flying Scotsman in a hostile takeover? Well, I'll go ahead and be honest with you. What you are witnessing is a very elaborate and... Um, very fun little uh, April Fool's Day joke that Jay and I decided to take a part in a couple months ago. Um, I had this idea that on April Fool's Day, why don't we upload our videos to each other's channels? We figured it would be a good way to pr kind of promote each other, um, just show um, each channel, um, their viewers, um, what the other channel has to offer. And so today, here on the Flying Scotsman, you're going to get a sneak peek at what happens here at the Nostalgia Mall YouTube channel. And what we're going to do today is take a look at probably the flagship of my channel, the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. And it's living in my bedroom right now, so let's go check it out, shall we? Say hello to the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. Now, those who watch my channel regularly know all there is to know about this computer, but for those who um, have never seen any of my videos, well, this computer holds a very, very special place in my heart. This was my family's very first computer we ever owned. You see, my dad bought this um, computer brand new, on December 5th, 1995 from Best Buy and I was just absolutely amazed by the concept of a computer. Now I'd already been introduced to, a, to computers um, now I'd already been introduced to the concept of a home computer um, that same year in the summer of 1995 when my aunt introduced me to her newly acquired Gateway 2000 P5100XL running Windows 3.1. And that was the first computer I ever saw or used. And I guess because my aunt got a computer that year, my dad um, decided to um, follow suit. And as I said, he bought ourselves a Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. And it was our main daily driver computer, our only computer at, at, um, for that matter, from 1995 until 1999 when it was replaced with a HP Pavilion running Windows 98. But as for this computer, I had so many good times on this computer. I, this is the computer I learned how to use a computer on. And can I say the word computer anymore, you think? <laughs> so, um... I played so many games on it. Um, my dad and I, we played games like um, Putt Putt, um, Fatty Bear, Earthworm Jim, Firefight, um, 3D Ultra Pinball, um, numerous DOS games. Um, I haven't given the specs of this computer yet. It originally had a 1.2 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. A 100 megahertz Intel Pentium processor, um, a socket 5, 16 megs of RAM, and it and it came pre-installed with Windows 95, my favorite operating system of all time, because it was the first version of Windows I ever owned, thanks to this computer. And throughout the years we had this computer, um, I had so many good times with it. Unfortunately, it was given away in the year 2000 to a friend of my dad's, and I never saw it ever again. So you're probably wondering, um, well, if you got rid of that computer, why are we looking at it right now on camera in the year 2019? Well, that's an interesting story. When I first got into 90s nostalgia, Back in the year 2005, yes, I know, I was quite a pioneer, I decided to get a computer identical to the one I grew up with back in the 90s, another Packard Bell. It didn't have to be um, the original one I had, although that would have been preferred. So what I came up with was a Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. 
It was um, almost identical in specs, except um, it had a 120 megahertz Pentium instead of 100 megahertz, and it was a flatbed desktop design, whereas this one is a mini tower. And I used that for many years, um, and when Value Village opened up in Greensboro in 2010, I acquired even more Packard Bells to add to my growing collection. But throughout those years, I was after the gold. And that gold was the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. And let me tell you, finding a specific Packard Bell model is not an easy task because they had so many models back then with so similar specs. It's, it's a labor of love trying to find um, a specific model of Packard Bell. So it took me many, many years of trying to get one of these. And finally, in April of 2013, a friend of mine in a Packard Bell Collectors Facebook group I'm a part of happened to come across one of these. And thanks to his generosity, he donated this to me free of charge. And there it is right there and the nice thing about this computer is it is in mint condition it still looks brand new almost 24 years later and it works beautifully by the way so let's just take a quick tour of this particular machine shall we okay I've gone off the tripod this is not the original CD-ROM drive the original does not read recorded CDs which is a real bummer because I would love to have the original in here but oh well this one still matches quite well it's a 52 speed Sony drive from the early 2000's Our floppy drive there and it still has the original spec sticker pause if you want to read that and, and that's what makes this Packard Bell special to me that that tag right there legend 822 CDT complete with an Intel inside and along with this um, we have a original Packard Bell modern monitor this is a 14 inch CRT this was built sometime in 1996 and the exterior is in beautiful immaculate condition unfortunately the CRT well, it takes, it, it works, but it takes a few minutes for the picture to really um, brighten up. But other than that, it still works great. This is the um, original microphone that came with the original 822. That's the only part of that computer I still have. An original Packard Bell keyboard, original Packard Bell mouse, and I even have this original Best Buy mouse pad. This is the same mouse pad that came with the original 822 back in 1995. A few a few years ago, I was able to come I was able to source one of these from eBay. And this wasn't original to um, the 822, but I decided to go ahead and add this to this particular one anyway. We got a Packard Bell fast media remote with the IR sensor sitting right there. And I even got a um, Packard Bell visor on top of it, along with Marty McFly's watch from Back to the Future, and a box copy of Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. Kind of adds to the little aesthetic I've got going here. Now, upgrades that I've done to this computer. Well, since this computer is extremely sentimental to me, I have been very, very, very picky about what upgrades I do to this. The only upgrades that are really in this computer, um, well, we got the better CD-ROM drive in here. And I've also added a um, Ethernet network card so it can connect to the Internet. Of course, you really don't want to be browsing the Internet on a computer from 1995. But the main reason I have, it on, have that card in here is so I can connect to my Windows 2000 domain server. Don't ask me how I was able to make that. It's a long story. And I've also replaced the original hard drive. Um, well, actually, the original hard drive was missing um, when I got this computer. I replaced the um, spinning hard drive with a compact flash card that 
connects in through the expansion slots back there. You can't really see it though. And the card I'm using is a 2 gigabyte Transcend card. And other than that, the computer is still pretty much stock. Oh, and it does have 32 megs of RAM now. So, without further ado, enough rambling, let's power this computer up. Alright, let's turn the monitor on. And now the computer. Again, the monitor might be a little hard to see for the first few minutes. I love that floppy seek sound. I really hope this monitor isn't going out on me because the exterior of it looks absolutely immaculate. It looks dark right now, but don't worry, um, as the video continues, it'll gradually start looking a little bit brighter. I'll skip the network and log on for now. Now that is a classic sound right there if I've ever heard one. Okay, I had to pause for a little bit to go eat supper. It was delicious, by the way. And the monitor seems to have warmed up to how it should look. So let's go ahead and uh, bring the camera a little bit closer to the screen and take a look at some of the software I have on here. Alright, we'll go to my computer first of all look at the device manager and the system properties we're actually running on the original release of Windows 95 RTM and normally I don't do that I usually opt for Windows 95 B because it's a little bit more stable and you get support for FAT32 and larger drives plus USB if you have it on your computer but one RTM is original to the system and originality is what I'm going for on here and two RTM on Packard Bells runs surprisingly very well. I don't ever have any issues with it, so RTM, it shall remain. Let's see, I got our 32 megs of RAM. Got Cirrus Logic 5434 video. That's built into the motherboard, by the way. 3Com Ethernet card, which I added myself. And a Packard Bell sound card with a built-in modem. And I've always got to show this. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from. Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. <laughs> a lesson on using the mouse. <laughs> I've joked about it before, but back in 1995, um, most people didn't have a computer just yet, so had to learn how to use a mouse somehow. <laughs> so what you're looking at is Packard Bell Navigator. Again, um, regular viewers of my channel know all about Packard Bell Navigator, but for those who don't, Packard Bell Navigator was an alternate graphical user interface made by Packard Bell for their computers, which allowed you to move through different rooms in a little house. Like right here, um, you start off in the uh, living room, which is where all your um, like audio um, equipment is, and your telephone equipment. And you also can click this Packard Bell box right here to register your system. And your software room, which is um, where all your software is that comes pre-installed on your Packard Bell. And this is part of what makes a Packard Bell a Packard Bell, the software that it came with. It, um, it ca you see back then, um, pre-installed bundles on an OEM system, especially on a Packard Bell like this, were actually really good. Because, you know, nowadays all you get is bloatware, like wild tangent games, trial stuff, uh, 
broken trials of McAfee antivirus, <laughs> stuff that nobody wants to use, and I don't recommend you using it either. But on this computer back in 1995, you would get real software like Microsoft Works, version 3.0. Later, Packard Bells came with 4.0. Got your Microsoft Money Action, um, which is a program by Macromedia, which uh, was kind of a poor person's version of Microsoft PowerPoint. Get some more software there. Get Encarta 95, Sports Illustrated, Almanac, your um, Microsoft Entertainment Pack games, children's games. Games like uh, My First Encyclopedia, Toon Land, Spider-Man Cartoon Maker, and the Kid Story games were certainly big parts of my childhood growing up with a computer. And you get your modem software and your Windows accessories like Microsoft Paint and Notepad. And the info room, which is where you get access to uh, your online services like America Online, Prodigy, CompuServe, and your m manuals for your computer. So yeah, it was um, a great way of having a easy-to-use interface for those who were a little too nervous to try Windows. Um, this version of Navigator came on both on Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 base Packard Bells. This one being 95, of course. Alright, let's play a couple of games, starting with um, one of my favorites as a kid. Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. This is my original copy that I got when I was six years old in the early part of 1996. I believe my dad bought this for me at CompUSA. Anyone remember that store? Missed that place. And this is made by Humongous Entertainment from 1993. Yes, it, it is a kid's game, but the nostalgic feel I get from it is amazing. Plus, you know... <laughs> It's a good game to play in the middle of the night when you can't sleep. It's because it just has that perfect aesthetic for that kind of feeling. Good night, Kayla. Good night, Dad. Tomorrow's my birthday, and Mom and Dad did have a big surprise for me. Good the night, Dad. The surprise is, Dad. Kayla, you're adopted. Good. For those who haven't seen any of my videos, I tend to make terrible jokes during these games. There's a lot of work to do before. And for some reason, the music cut out. Let me see if I can uh, put that back on there. For a big, beautiful birthday there we cake. Go. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I, don't know why I, did I that. better get busy too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. That's I'm Gretchen. Even going to make she always has birthday a lot of decorating to do for her bulletin some board. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Fatty Bear, would you like some help making the birthday cake? I'm a heck of a cleaner upper. Oh, yes. Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. That would be nice. And that's a rabbit with too much caffeine. Speaking of caffeine, one of my fondest memories of this game was in the summer of 96. I think it was summer of 96. I would play this game religiously every night with my mom while having a can of Pepsi. Yes, this is an actual Pepsi can from the 90s. Bought it at an antique store for a dollar or two a couple years ago. It expired in uh, 1998. Of course, it's empty. Of course, I'm not going to play through the entire game. That would take too long. But the music in this game is absolutely nostalgic. It has... Um, I, I don't know how to describe it exactly. It has just the perfect aesthetic to it. And 
And also, this is why um, you should never use Windows Vista. There you go. Let's see if I can change the song here. Find a good one here just to... Yes. This is my favorite. Just listen to this. So let's uh, close out of that for now and move on over to another game. This is another game that I played on this computer all the time as a kid, even more than this one, believe it or not. Let me introduce you to my favorite computer game of all time, Earthworm Jim. This is the special edition version made for Windows 95 in 1995. My dad bought this in 1996, early 1996, from Sam's Club. And this is the original disc here that I've had for 23 years, complete with all of the scratches on it. Still plays just fine, though. And pop it in the drive. Yeah, this is such a fun game because it doesn't take itself seriously at Rovi! all. It has a very good sense of humor about it. Oh, and um, I use this Microsoft Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick with this computer. Had one back in the day as well. These are probably my favorite yeah. joysticks for old computers. <laughs> now we're going to skip ahead to my favorite level in this game. This level was unavailable on the um, console, except for the Sega CD. Mouse needs to be clean, I think. This level is hilarious. And it terrified me as a child. Which, we, as you will see uh, momentarily, once we get to that part of the level, Okay, watch this. What you're about to see terrified me as a six-year-old. You have been warned. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Big Broody in the Flesh. I first... <laughs> love that. First time I ever played this game, when I was six years old, that terrified me. <laughs> but after playing this a few more times, I went from being terrified of Big Broody to absolutely laughing my head off at Big Broody because it was so ridiculous. Um, basically, Big Broody is a giant dinosaur um, mutant on, a, on some foreign planet who um, eats everything in sight, especially worms. I thought he was a frog when I was a kid, but apparently he's a dinosaur. So what you have to do is basically you have to trick him. You see, he's blind. Get him to chase you and do stuff like this. <laughs> so yeah, big broody, dumb as a rock. Now, um, Jay, the proprietor of this here channel, has this theory that Big Broody is actually 
UK Prime Minister ah. Theresa May's dog. <laughs> but she doesn't know he's actually a mutant dinosaur. <laughs> Bertie, have you been eating worms? <laughs> One more time here. This part's pretty funny as well. He turns into a bunch of little broodies. Broodies hot puppies! <laughs> there we go. And um, that's Earthworm Jim for you. Now, we'll play one more game. I want to demonstrate the um, the DOS gaming ability of this computer because the nice thing about these old Packard Bells is somehow they were able to configure it perfectly for DOS gaming with way more than enough conventional memory than you'll ever need as you'll see momentarily we'll drop down into DOS mode I will go to my folder for um, games and we'll do um, a popular staple of my channel, Scott Rhodes Christmas Special. Actually, first let me show you how much memory we got to work with here. 620K. Everything's going to work on that, trust me. <laughs> I love it. This is a game I did play as a kid. Hard as nails though, as you'll see. Sorry if the refresh rate's a little nuts. <laughs> okay, we gotta use the keyboard, I guess. First couple of levels, not too bad. As soon as I say that, I blow up. <laughs> So I'm playing this from a weird angle. Music in this game, by the way, is really good. Right, that's done. Let's find one of a good song here. We just cycle through a little bit. My favorite. Really takes you back. Okay, now Every level pass from the, from here on out, I've never been able to beat because this game is horribly, horribly hard. As you'll see here, there's a running gag on my channel where I can never get past Road 3. Well, this is Road 3. <laughs> I know there's a special technique to this someone told me about, but I've never been able to accomplish that because of that. <laughs> so there you go, Sky Roads Christmas Special. Computer does great with DOS gaming. Okay, we're back in Windows. This time we're going to be doing um, pretty much a staple of my channel for many years, the infamous Canyon Test, where we show off the MIDI capabilities of a computer. OPL3.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, my favorite computer of all time. I've had so many good times with this computer uh, as a kid, even as an adult. It's just the perfect mid-90s gaming computer, if you ask me. Now, if you want to see more stuff like this, if you want to see more of the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, other Packard Bells, other computers, and other um, similar features, I invite you to come visit me on my main driver channel, the Nostalgia Mall. The link should probably be in the description somewhere, so, if you, so again, if you want to see more stuff like this, come visit Billy Core over at the Nostalgia Mall. And for the rest of you, um, stay tuned for um, your regularly scheduled videos from Jay, the Flying Scotsman himself. Um, and if you want to see um, what he has in store for my channel, well, go ahead and check out my channel for his video. I know it's confusing, isn't it? <laughs> so, I will leave you with this. Billy Core, signing off.